What do I know about color? Let's check out what our featured artist, Mark Rothko, knows about color. Mark Rothko painted compositions of richly colored squares filling large canvases, evoking what he referred to as the sublime. Rothko is one of the pioneers of color-filled painting. Rothko's abstract arrangements of shapes, slightly surreal by amorphic ones to dark squares and rectangles, are intended to evoke the metaphysical through viewer's communion with the canvas in a controlled setting. When you view a Mark Rothko painting in a gallery or a venue, you will become fully immersed in his work. As you see here in this gallery photo, as mentioned before, Mark Rothko used shapes and color in his paintings. By 1950, Rothko had reduced the number of floating rectangles to two, three, or four, and aligned them vertically against a colored ground, arriving at his signature style. From that time on, he would work almost invariably within this format, suggesting numerous variations of color and tone, an astonishing range of atmospheres and moods. Here we see two of his works. Pause the video here and take a second to look at these works. Do they emit a feeling to you? Do you feel some kind of way by looking at these pieces? Do you see any images appear and disappear within these pieces? If you look at the large yellow rectangle and the piece on the left, you can see the color bouncing in and out of that rectangle. What else do you see here? Oh, hey there, how are you guys doing today? Are you ready to make a color wheel? Now let's begin making a color wheel with Mr. Furlong. The materials you need to make your color wheel are a sketchbook or something to write on, black pen, markers, colored pencils, regular pencils, ruler, and eraser. Like with any other activity or idea, we wanna plan it out. So you see here, we are drawing a thumbnail sketch. We're drawing a small sketch out of what it is that we would like to do for our color wheel. So it can be as many um, thumbnail sketches as you'd like until you find a design that you want to draw. So we're thinking of a color wheel as a round, circular image. You can find something circular at home to trace, such as a plate or a cup or a bowl if you turn it upside down. We want to now cut our circle into very specific sections. Remember to be drawing lightly so that we can erase and or color over these marks at some point. So we've got a vertical line and then it looks like we've drawn two diagonal lines and then you cut those diagonal lines in half and then in half again and that will give you 12 even sections. He's actually now drawing some details in his color wheel and you can see the circle is changing shapes. That very straight circle that he drew before is changing shapes. So now we're going to label our color wheels with the color. If you need to refer back to the color wheel here in the video, please do that. Now within each section, he is going to color in that section to the color that he labeled. And you want to color again really lightly at first and then you go in later and add in all the dark shade. He's coloring his primary and secondary colors. If you mix red and yellow you get orange. If you mix red and blue you get violet. If you mix blue and yellow you get green. So now we're mixing a secondary and a primary color. Orange and red give you red-orange. Orange and yellow give you yellow-orange. Yellow and green give you yellow-green. Green and blue give you blue-green. Mixing a primary and secondary color give you what we call a 
tertiary color. And you want to shade areas that are farther away from the light. We think of our pizza as having a round crust. So now it looks like we're going to go back and just color in details. And you can use any colors here that you would like. We're making things look more full and realistic. So that means we're adding shading. You can do shading with a darker version of the color that you chose in your color wheel. You can use brown for shading. And there you have it. Be as creative as you would like to be. You can select any round object that you want to do um, and to use for your color wheel. Just remember your colors must remain organized in this order as you see them on their color wheel.